Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Charlotte Adams. She has her own podcast on our channel. She is a podcast community uh, in a person who participates in our group, and she is a guitar expert and musician, and she also has a lot of experience over the years playing instruments, especially with the guitar, and she has a lot of knowledge to share, and she has some really good input and advice, so listen and, and put your ears up because she's going to really, really stun you with some of the information she has to share today. So Charlotte, how's everything going, and what's been going on? Oh, it's going fine. It's a beautiful day here and uh, have no complaints about that. And I've just been super busy like you have. Mm -hmm. But like you, all the stuff I'm busy with is stuff that I'm excited about and like to do. So yeah, no complaints. So tell me a little about what your ideas are, because so many people love music and love, especially the guitar, and they love to either play it or they just love to listen to it. Tell me what that means to you. Well, I, I'll, I'd like to start with what it means to, I mean, I think it can mean different things to different people, but but really what does it mean to the listener, to you, you and the people listening? Um, I think it's just an expression that we hear, oh, he's a natural or she's a natural, because it seems like when they play, it is so natural. They don't, there's no struggle, and it seems like it comes easily to them, and maybe it did come more easily to them as they were coming up than it seems to come to you. So, um, you know, it, it gets into, we could get into, and I'd like to at some point, but I don't want to get off of how to how to get you going into being this natural musician into um is is really good musicianship acquired or is it born in we touched on that some mm -hmm. and of course my my stance is that you can grow talent but it doesn't mean that there aren't people who are very talented springing from the womb you know so mm -hmm. um i don't think it's an either or question i think it's a yes yes you know like most things in life I yeah think, i like that but um Natural musicianship is, you know, I would define as what I just described, uh, um, being able to play with ease, being able to play expressively, uh, having yourself in it, and, um, and no, you know, lack of struggle Yeah, would be a part of that. So um, what I really want to talk about today, there are a lot of things that, that bring you toward that or to that, and that's another thing about growing talent that's what you those are the things that you want to cultivate to grow your talent but today I want to talk about the most important one of those which I think gets left out a lot because you know we talk about hard work which is another time I mean I don't I think I'd rather talk about strong commitment than hard work yeah right? because you know there's a, a, a concept of do less accomplish more you know that's right. I, I adhere to that so relaxation connection a lot of different things that go into that rather than just like pounding in it because you could be the hardest worker in the world and not get it exactly right and yeah. so that's why people think i you know it's it makes you feel bad if you're like but i've worked really hard and i've done all these steps that you've talked about i've practiced this i practice that and it's still not what i want so i'm going to give you today what is in my experience with my bazillion students uh the key which is listening. Okay, so 100% of the time when I'm working with a student and they're not getting something, it's because they're not hearing it completely or accurately. Yes. Okay, so 100% of the time what I'm doing with any student is listening to what they do and hearing, oh, let's fix this. Oh, it's missing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm filling in those gaps. I'm making corrections. And I think that that hard work and doing everything right, um, you have to be careful with that because we have kind of a, a cultural programming mm -hmm. of getting the grade, doing it right, checking all the boxes. And um, the big box here is connecting you and your guitar or whatever your instrument is. Like the name of my two book set, You and Your Guitar. It's about all of that. So yes. like so many things in life, it's about maybe everything. It's about connection. Mm -hmm. So the listening is the big thing. Now, I want to 
emphasize how you can start this before you ever pick up an instrument or at any time during your playing, you can begin to cultivate your listening skills, develop them further and further. And the cool thing is, like playing guitar, which I always say, the bad news is you'll never get there. And the good news is you'll never get there. <laughs> <laughs> because I get bored. I couldn't have a career in something that just was finite. You know, I don't want to mm -hmm. learn a skill and then just do assembly line the rest of my life. It's, right. not, it's not about making money. It's about being fulfilled. And connected. yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so listening, your listening skills will continue to improve your whole life. Mine are continuing to improve all the time. It is the most exciting thing to me about playing because when a student brings me a song and says, I want to play that, I listen to it once I've got it. I can show them how to play it. Yeah. I love that. It's super fun. Or if I'm playing with other people and they start playing, I can jump right in and play because I, well, part of it is I've played a lot and I can anticipate yeah. what's coming, but, but I can anticipate it for a variety of reasons. A lot of what I'm doing is using my ear. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'd like to, to talk about this in two different parts today. The first part is I'm going to talk about how you can begin to cultivate this. You, Stacy, or anybody at home now, like as soon as you stop listening, to this podcast would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> By listening to the music you like. You right. don't have to be playing an instrument. You don't have to be studying an instrument. You just have to shift the way you hear your music. Right. Now, there's, you know, the, the key here is intentionality, mm -hmm. right? So, I just want to draw this analogy. So we all know that if we're, if we, we have some place that we like to go, but we've never taken ourselves there. Someone drives us every time. We may have gone there 50 times, a hundred times, but yeah. if we had to get ourselves there, we go, Oh, I'm, I don't know. Do I turn here or there? How far is it? We haven't done it ourselves. So that's the degree of engagement that, that you have or you don't have. Right. And the same thing applies to your listening. What happens is a student brings me, this is my favorite song since I was a teenager. I love this song. I've listened to it thousands of times. Can you sing it? <laughs> no, they don't. They're missing words. They don't have the melody accurate. Various gaps. And sometimes the whole thing is just one big gap. Yeah. Like driving the car, they need to get in the car and drive themselves. Right. right? To be able to get that. And so those those are some things we're going to talk about today is how to do that. The next step of engagement is if you um, say every time you drive to that place, you have a map mm -hmm. or you have your GPS talking at you. Yeah. Okay. You can get there, but you still don't have the, the full engagement because you need that. You're still dependent on that. So that's what happens with people who depend on reading music. And tabs, you don't get off free for that. You're still yeah. depending on, on symbols to get you there. So you don't really have this holistic um, experience. Right. So so now we want to, in, to get rid of the map. And yeah. say that's north, south, east, west. Oh, I got the directions. Oh, and I know this time of year the leaves this look this way on that side of the road, or it smells this way because something's blooming. You begin to get more and more engaged in the, with the environment. Yeah. So we want to get really engaged with the musical environment in that same yeah. way. So first step is, as I say, you can just start listening to music with deeper intentions and it right. gets to be more and more fun so mm -hmm. there are things that you love about the songs you love identify them right where are they oh did you hear that oh listen to that little bass line or listen to that little harmony mm -hmm. or oh i love the way the the the, the rhythm shifts there yeah so you you can, and I recommend doing this with a lot of songs, like every song, if you're serious about getting to be a better listener and, and getting more enjoyment out of your listening, yeah. is start just, you know, if most people groove to their music anyway, clap, and then yeah. clap, or just maybe clap on the one, two, three, four, on the first beat, and then you can start to count with it. Now you're really getting with the rhythm, and then you may find that, oh, 
I'm counting four, I'm counting four, and that's working and working, working. And suddenly I'm counting and it shifts. That must have only had two beats in that measure. Right. Now, uh, oh, no wonder I like that part so much. It got my interest. It was a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. So you, you start to identify these things and then you can listen to how the notes are played mm -hmm. and how and start to define them like you would remember when you were in English class in high school, you know, yeah. is it sweet? Is it warm? Is it sharp? Is it cold? Is it what to you? How does it feel? Right. And when does it shift? And what does that shift make you feel? Yeah. When you feel something, why am I feeling that? Oh, there's another thing. Listen to those chords, the quality of the chord. Does it sound like a happy chord or a sad chord? Mm. Is it major yeah. or minor? Or then does it sound like all the harmonies, which would be the chords, are going along all together just fine? And then there's something, wow, that's really interesting, but it didn't sound like it stepped completely out. Right. A little twist to it. You start to identify those things. Now you're doing ear training already. Yeah. Which I, and I'm kind of not, not like loving calling it ear training it sounds like you're training your ears <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and really you're developing your mind mm -hmm. your perceptions you're um expanding your perceptions you're right. getting better at identifying and naming yeah and you're connecting mm -hmm. to these sounds okay so how are we doing so far do you think that's something you're going to be listening oh to? for sure yeah okay, cool. So then the next thing you can do is the melody, because that's the, the melody is like, that's at the top. You know, we have different elements of music, melody, harmony, rhythm, or the yeah. top. The, and rhythm is what gets you moving, and it might really get you going toward that song. But the melody is what you whistle. That's what you walk away with, right? Okay. Or you sing, or you la-la-la mm -hmm. in the shower. So now we want to start really thinking about that melody, because... Right. 90% of the time, maybe a higher percentage of the time, when my students come and they sing, they don't, even people who sing on key pretty much that can find the starting pitch and can, they have whole portions that are just, nah. mm -hmm. <laughs> like, wait a minute, what'd you say there? Start to know where every note is. Right. Okay. And then you can start listening to your own singing or playing preferably both, mm -hmm. and determine where those little vague phrases are. Yeah. Get rid of that vagueness. I want to know what you're saying. Right. I don't want you talking to me and leaving out three-fourths of the words because they're like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 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 So you want to pinpoint those guys. So when, as you're doing that, you're going to notice that there are some songs, some notes you don't know what they are. Yeah. You've been listening to this for a thousand times, maybe 2,000, maybe 200, whatever. You don't know what those notes are. You just thought you knew them because you know the highs and the lows and the yeah. parts of the punch. But it's all that other stuff that holds it together. Right. You need all of it. So what you can do is go note to note. Da, da. Was that up or down? Da, da. And when you sing it, you can feel it and identify it more clearly. Right. So, to sing and I'll talk about that again in a minute because not everybody wants to do that. Da da oh it went up. Now did it go up a skip or a step? So from each note go did it go up or down? Oh it went down this time and then it just went down a little or it went down a lot. You start to just make a map and you can get a piece of paper and draw a map. Like you'll right. have a neutral line where this is like your baseline. We're gonna yeah. call that tonic which is the starting point of the scale or the key name. Right. Okay. And that and, and your line, you make a horizontal line. I made this up. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I do this with my students all the time. You make a line and then when it goes up, you go up. And if it goes up a lot, you go up a lot and it goes down. And you do that. And suddenly, at some point, if someone like me, for example, points it out to you, you're writing music. Mm. You don't, you know, this thing that you've shied away from so much. Music is just a map. Standard notation is a map. Yeah. Yeah. So so then you can say, and it, you don't have to do it because you want to write music, but I just thought I'd point it out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really <laughs> it, is. It's that much closer to being able to read music. 
you know, reading music well is not about knowing each note and where it is like a keyboard, like right. reading music is being able to see the shapes and sing or play it on your instrument. Okay. Okay. That's, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, and I'm the one talking. So what I think matters today. <laughs> 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 okay, so you have these ways of listening, and then when you have your instrument, you want to listen the same way. Right. Because when my students play for me, their perspective is not always what it needs to be for optimal results. Right. They're thinking about this mechanical stuff, again, yeah. back to like the way we learn in school. But we want to always be connecting back to the ear, to the ear, to the ear, to the heart, to the ear. Right. Right. To the instrument, to the ear, to the instrument. And and it becomes inseparable. Mm -hmm. Which is what playing by ear seems so magical. Even to me, <laughs> when I'm playing by ear, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is very cool. That's why we all want to do it. Because it's like, we, you know, it's yeah. like some kind of a free sport you're doing you know you're skiing downhill or you're jumping over jumps on your horse or you're doing these things there's just like you're in the zone yeah right yeah sure so you want to start cultivating the way you can listen while you play right and listening while you play is what the professional musician is doing a hundred percent of the time mm. so you're you know you're tweaking this you're inventing that you're tweaking something else you're flowing with the other that's what you're doing playing well is about listening right reading music is about listening learning a song is about listening everything is about listening <laughs> when you start an instrument it becomes you become so engrossed in getting the mechanics getting your hands to do the right thing yeah sound the sound that you want out of your instrument and then you know with guitar oh my goodness people get so engrossed in the instrument themselves you know like oh it's so sexy and what color is it and what kind of pedals do you have and what kind of, you know which is mm -hmm. fine you like it do that great i'm not you know, i'm not down that at all it's fun yeah but you got to remember that if you want to play it well yeah and get into this connected space right that you want to listen to the same things, really. And my, uh, here comes, I want to play this. I hear this in my head. Is it going to be a big skip or a little skip up or down? Right. So that's that's kind of the gist of it. Um, to me, it's the biggest thing you can do. And you can do it, as I say, away from your instrument a lot of time. So um, I'm going to talk some about now how to put that how to connect that with your instrument before I do I want to know what do you think or is there anything that you want to ask me about or you or comment on or how are you how do you feel about any of this I, no, I understand I understand <laughs> <laughs> I understand completely what you're saying I think like when I was trying to learn instruments I got too involved with the mechanics instead of like like you said listening to the beat going high or you know is it, go, is it going high or is it going low I was so worried about learning to play and, and to do it right that I think I was avoiding those steps. And I think that's why I had so much difficulty when I was trying to learn instruments because I was too too engulfed into learning the mechanics and I wasn't really, it seems like you have to kind of not so worry about the mechanics, but open your ears and really listen to what the sounds are saying to you and then just naturally go with the rhythm and go with the, with the instrument that you're playing like the guitar and then it comes all it all kind of pieces together as one that's what I, I kind of get you know right. and again you know like like if you want to get in the car and drive yourself somewhere well you better learn how to drive <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta get a license Right, you're not, you know, crashing is not what we want. <laughs> we need the mechanics, we definitely yeah. need the mechanics. And but you know, like we're saying, is the mechanics are, can be so difficult that we forget that we're there to make music. Yeah, but you can be musical from the first time you pick up your instrument. Right. So you can play scales beautifully, and mm -hmm. 
I highly recommend it. It's much more fun. People are like, oh, I hate playing scales and exercises. I'm like, I love playing scales and exercises because I'm ingraining those mechanics and I'm playing it musically and I like to play music. Musically. Right. So I don't want to hear myself or anybody else play robotically. Yeah. Scales, scales to me are not an excuse to be a robot. Right. You know, scales are an element that you're going to be using in your music. That's wonderful. For you know, someone they're, they're gonna for take so, you somewhere. For someone who doesn't know what scales are, can you explain to somebody who was interested in music but they don't know the term scales? Thank you. That's why I wanted to turn <laughs> to you some. Um so you know most people know the do a deer female deer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do re mi fa so that's a scale. So okay. the scale is a set of notes organized in a particular fashion that creates a tonal center. So okay. that the, the tonal center, so the whole song is organized in the center. So you've got a home to carry right. in. And, and home base, as I said, is tonic, the beginning note of the scale. So the most commonly known scale and the one that is going to be the most useful to you for Western music meaning, you know, European music, whether it's classical, folk, rock, jazz, whatever. Right. Is the major scale. And then the one that's born from that is the minor scale. There are three forms of minor. But we're basically going to be, for the beginner, we're going to be dealing with either a major mode or a minor mode. Right. A major scale or a minor scale. And there are formulas for each scale. I mean, there's there are hundreds of scales because, you know, different cultures have their music that's why when you listen to music from one culture that's very different from ours it's, the music sounds really different it's yeah. based on a different organization of tones or notes yeah so the major scale is organized like if you go to a piano mm -hmm. and you see like if anybody can find middle c it's the one before the two black keys right right the white key black key white key black key white key white key two white keys in a row Black, white, black, white, black, white, white, another two two in a row. Yeah. From any one of those to the other, whether it's a, a white key to a black key or or a white key that's right adjacent to two white keys adjacent to one another, that's called a half step. Okay. So like back, let's go back to the C, which is white key, black key. White key is D. So now we went a whole step. C to D is a whole step. Okay. And if you go to the piano and you play, piano is so much easier than any other instrument. So you can see it literally in black and white. Yeah. Go so this way, you're going up. You go that way, you're going down in pitch. Mm -hmm. So if you if you start on that C and you play all white keys till you get to the next C, you will have played a C scale. Okay. Okay. That's the organization of the of the tones. Now that won't work on any other starting on any other note. You have to. You know, you can get the formula, you can extract it from, from that, or you can have somebody tell you, you can go on my website, and you can get the formula whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and mm -hmm. you can start anywhere and do it, it'll sound like do, re, mi, fa, so, like, tito. Right. So that's, that's scale, and it's essential, which segues into what I was going to say that you can do for your ear training to start connecting it to your instrument. Okay. The best thing you can do is learn a major scale. Thank you for leading me into that. <laughs> so learn a major scale. It could just be one octave. Um, it doesn't have to be two two octaves. Um, and then you want to sing the scale with it while you're playing. Okay. Again, if you have a keyboard, it, it may be easier for you to start on the keyboard because on the guitar, you have to change strings. Mm. That's the crazy thing about the guitar. Right. But you need to learn it anyway. So, I mean, yeah. you can learn it. It depends on your level of patience or if, you know, if you need something more visual. But if you're just doing a one octave scale, I'm going to suggest you don't do the one octave scale in the first position on the guitar because it includes open strings. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. But if you, anybody that plays guitar will realize that if you play bar chords for example you yeah. you bar all across one fret with your index finger and you make the chord shape with your other three fingers then you can play 12 chords for the price of one mm. play one chord shape and you just move the bar 
up. And it's okay. a skill that scales. If you learn a scale pattern that every note you play, you're using a finger. It's not an open string. You're having to yeah. put down on a fret. Right. When you do that, you can play all 12 scales. Oh, wow. Pattern. Ah, how cool is that? That is very cool. Super cool. So, so I would recommend doing that for starters. And if you know a C scale in the open position, you're comfortable with it and you understand how the sounds move across the strings, by all means, go for it. I'm just saying that if it, if it feels a little weird to you, just learn what I call scale pattern number one. It's on my website and all my books or most of my books. And then you can, uh, you can play any scale. So you can yeah. find a place that your voice is comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to find a place your voice is comfortable and just sing it. But instead of trying to sing, you don't need to know all the note names, especially okay. in the beginning. You know, at some point you want to know the notes on your guitar, but it takes a long time. You're not going to do that. I actually had one student one time who just absolutely insisted she was going to memorize all the notes on the guitar before she did anything else. I kept saying, you know, not very realistic. I think you're going to get frustrated. Why don't we do this and learn it as we go? I have a system where you can learn it pretty quickly and we'll do it one area at a time. No, 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 no. And she went away and she came back <laughs> much later, very frustrated. She said, okay, I'm ready to go with the way you say <laughs> like memorizing the dictionary if you want to speak the language oh wow so if you want to speak the language start speaking and then adding vocabulary as you go right you don't have that intention to build a vocabulary but you don't want to men memorize the dictionary right it's not fun and it won't work so so same with scales you don't have to memorize the whole fretboard all you have to do is memorize a pattern yeah and then instead of saying the note names say what I'm going to call the scale degree numbers. Mm. So in other words, instead of saying do re mi, you say one, two, three. Right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then get where you can it won't take you very long. Sing it. One, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. Now skip to one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one. Now yeah. you know that interval. One, two, three, four, one, four, one, four, one, one, two, three, four, five, one, five, one, five, one, one, two, three, four, five, four, one, five, four, one, two, one. See, you start playing with them. Yeah, so yeah. You can do something with those five notes or three notes if it's easier or all the eight notes. Yeah. Where you are, start there. Right. And go from there. And then you can do that on your instrument. Play mm -hmm. one, which is tonic. Two, which is scale degree two in the key of C, it would be D. Whatever scale you're in, you, if you want to know the note, fine, look it up or figure it out. But you don't need yeah. to right now. Right, right now, you want to get scale degree numbers because we're trying to get our ear in there, right? Yeah. And then, then you start connecting where these sounds are with where your fingers are right right isn't that cool that is very cool yeah they did a documentary i don't know if you know eddie van halen and he was a rock and roll star but he sure. he had such a a knack for the guitar and they were showing him when he was playing the guitar with the two handles and he just i think it was scaling what he was doing. he was just going so quickly but he wasn't he wasn't really moving too much but he was he, he was using one hand more than the other but all yeah. his notes you know just came out of it and it all flowed but just watching it was like like it was like wow you know it was just uh it was amazing how quick his hand went he used one hand more than the other and the other hand just like it, it seemed like he was just pressing against three three notes most of the time but his other hand was going like this but the music that came out was so amazing and it all yeah. flowed together it was just uh it was really cool to watch. It was just like, wow, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Yeah. So that's that's the other thing. It's, it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what does? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. No, I mean, you're, you're building muscle in your body. You're building muscle in your mind. You're, you know, developing your sense of hearing, your oral senses. I mean, you're developing things, you're building. Yeah. 
and then you do it a lot. And and that's one of the things about ear training is you don't have to say, oh, I have 30 minutes to practice or two hours to practice. You can do it while you're washing the dishes. Mm -hmm. so some things you're going to need your guitar or whatever instrument. You're going to need it in hand. Yeah. Um, and then you want to make use of what you're learning. Yeah. With your instrument. But um, so much you can do while you're driving, cooking, sweeping floors, listening, you know. Yeah, I don't think people realize that, though. I think when when, pe when people think about guitar training and, and just have it learn and have it naturally flow, you know, and you think more about you have to be in front of a guitar and you have to be holding the guitar and you have to be memorizing no notes. And I think people who aren't in familiar with learning how to play the guitar, those are the things that the mechanics come in. And they think it's, you know, it's constant, you know, play, play, play. And they don't realize that there's there's so many ways to to enhance your guitar playing, but it, besides staying in front of a guitar and trying to learn the mechanics of it, it's pretty cool when you explain it that way. Well, thank you. I I think that you know I don't see people talking about this way, and I think that the reason is probably that if you if you do just keep pounding at it and yeah. pounding it and pounding at it, in time you're going to get somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. But but again, you know, if you, you know, if someone drives you someplace 10,000 times instead of 100 times, you might be able to find your way there. Right. <laughs> um, and so there's that. And then um, it's also not real straightforward. It's not a very clear cut way how you can give this to someone. How do you teach someone to do this? Because you have to do it yourself if you want it. Yeah. You can't put your finger on it. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, in playing guitar, a lot of people just want to focus so much on what you do with your hands. Yeah. Obviously very important. Mm -hmm. But um, if you, for instance, if you learn singing. Right. You can't see what your vocal cords are doing. Mm -mm. You can't make them you can't direct them by looking at them. Right. Um, it has to be more visceral, more intuitive, very focused. And you take that those same skills and that same approach into guitar playing, and you're going to see big improvement. Wow. So, so it's a trust issue. Yeah. It's a trust issue that, you know, you have to be patient and keep doing it. Right. And and set aside your expectations. Right. So, you know, do it until you get it. Yeah. I mean, I always have a little bit of a, a reaction, I guess, more disappointment. I don't know what it is, but, but I notice when people start to play guitar and they say, well, <clears throat> can I do this in 30 minutes a day? Or when am I going to get there? Or when am I going to get to this? I'm like, you know. Yeah, you're gonna get there when you get there. Exactly. I mean, when I think back on when I started to play guitar, and the whole time I played guitar, I have never done it on a schedule. Okay. You don't. You don't say you. You're not at a job with a desk. Right. Um, so when I was a kid and I first picked up a guitar and I wanted to learn a song, how long did it take me to learn that song? I picked up the guitar and I played it until I knew it. Right. And that I mean. I don't, I can't tell you if it was three hours over the course, but I tell you when I went to bed that night, I could play the song. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if you had this other attitude about it, it could take you a month. Yeah. Maybe a week, whatever. And everybody's different. Everybody has different uh, capabilities that they come in with. Like yeah. They grow these things, but you're going to go at different speeds. You have different experiences from the past. Um, that will feed into your success or actually, especially the speed of your success. Yeah. But one way to do, no matter what, take it away from the clock. Yeah. And enjoy the process because that's, to me, the beauty of playing guitar or playing right. music is the playing of it. Yeah. Not that, oh, did I get that done today? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah.
I think you have to get more immersed into the music and really just listen to the notes and 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 let it take control of your soul in a sense, you know, just let it take control of you and just like really get immersed with the sound and, mm-hmm. and just kind of let your fingers flow and just just have fun with it is what I what I'm grasping. Right. Yeah. Be going for that zone. Yeah. No. <laughs> And and you're not going to get there all the time. And you may not get there very much at all. But yeah. you should get there if you don't have it as your intention. Right. Exactly. So trying, like really trying, is going to stifle that. Yeah. Commitment and sticking sticking with that discipline of being in that space. And I'm sorry, I'm not talking to you right now. I'm not texting. I'm not answering the phone. I'm right here. Right. Yeah, I think that's important. I think that's really important. It, it, it's it's to kind of like close off the rest of the world and really just focus on the sound and the music and just let your ears open and just, you know, think about the scales and the music and, and this where the sound is going. Is it going high? Is it going low? And then get used to where it, where it is. You know, if I go, if I touch this, it's going to be this way. If I touch this, it's going to go this way. And then kind of learn how to put it all together. So you could actually play music that flows and and has a a really pretty sound and a pretty flow to it, you know, according to what you like. Yeah. So so my advice is if you're learning songs off YouTube or wherever and it, you know, and you're not sure if it's right or not, this is a chronic issue with people. Yeah. I will say that if you if you're not sure if it's right, it's probably not. Right. So when just like matching pictures, oh, I wanted to talk about matching pictures because you know I said you need to sing, and some people are like, I can't match a pitch. Or I'm tone deaf. You're yeah. not tone deaf. I'm pretty pretty sure because there's such a tiny tiny per- percentage of the population is literally tone deaf. But unless yeah. you've got some kind of you know you have some kind of problem with your you know physiology. Right. Um. But you can learn to match pitches and you can try some apps and stuff to do that. But basically start with a pitch that's in your vocal range. It's comfortable for you. Right. And, and if you're hitting it with your voice, it will lock in. Mm-hmm. It, just, it just locks in. If it doesn't lock in, you're probably not there. You may right. be super close or you may be really far away. Right. If you if you feel like maybe I'm close and just kind of adjust a little bit, uh, uh, or uh, uh, you know, but yeah. if you're not sure, you can start. And when you hit the one that you're trying to match, yeah, keep that ringing, it'll lock in. Right. Or you can start low. Oh, there it locked right there. Yeah. So pay attention and learn to do that. If that's hard, you'll need. A, uh, someone who's experienced and knowledgeable yeah uh, to help you a teacher like right I can help people do that um uh, but after a certain amount of time of matching pitches you will be able to do it and that's critical that's a critical skill for playing by ear you right. have to have it. no one is gonna no one's gonna argue that right he's gonna back me up on this <laughs> <laughs> You have to be able to sing it before you can play it. Oh, yeah. No, you don't have to sing it with perfect tone and great breath control. You don't have to be a professional singer. You don't have to sing it in public. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't have to want to be heard. You, But you need to match match the pitches. Right, right. So I wanted to circle back around to that because that's an important thing that, that you need to know. Yeah. And if you had to take everything that we talked about today and you wanted to like really point out and emphasize some of the important factors, what would you say some of those things were that you want the listeners to understand about learning how to be a natural musician? I'd say that anytime that you're not satisfied with your playing or your learning, the speed of your learning or your comprehension, always look to see what's going on and what you could improve with your listening. Yeah. And and make it your intention to forever from now on the rest of your life continue to listen more deeply and to get more from what you're hearing. Right. 
you should be getting putting more into and getting more back out of what you're playing. So, so just uh, the main thing, the main takeaway I'd like for people to have today is to give importance to listening, ear training, if you will, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, and develop that, cultivate that skill. It's invaluable. Right. I like that. I like that a lot. Now you have a, a bunch of different services that you offer. What are some of the services that you offer? I teach online, one-on-one, -on -one, and also, um, well, and you can take lessons weekly, every other week, every month, every so often, one lesson, a whole semester. I actually offer, if you want to go beyond just guitar playing and you want to have a, a real musical education without having to pay for music school and travel and live somewhere, then yeah. you can take by the semester from me and I will help you with your whole musical education yeah um so from beginning if you want to just play a few songs and you've never picked up a guitar through that um yeah. i can i can do that online and then i have a line of books for beginner through advanced players i have you and your guitar which i referred to which teaches you the things that you need to know for your lesson, how your your level, how to how to approach those, how to get them, and then how to learn. Right. How to learn best. And then I have this virtual studio, uh, which, by the way, I really want to encourage your listeners on this because one of the books that I have written in the past, and that's the first book I wrote, I think, was my ear training course. And I have the whole course in the virtual studio and you can become a virtual studio member for free for a whole month. So you could take that course for free. I also have my music theory course and, you know, a lot, a lot of lessons. And then if you, if you want to stay in there, it's only $9.95 a month. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting an ear training course, it's going to be your cheapest way to go. And it, there's a lot in there. And then you you have access to me. You're, you're welcome to email me or ask questions or take a lesson every now and then and so forth. So that's pretty much it. Um, the virtual studio has, as I said, several courses in it and a lot of different lessons for every level player. And they can, so they can go on, on your, on your website to get the free, the, the free courses to try it out then. Yeah, so if you go on my website, at the top, on the top menu, it says Virtual Studio. Mm -hmm. Click on that. You'll have to sign up like you do, like you're a membership, but you won't get charged. You'll right. you know, act like you're going to get charged and we'll charge you zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can cancel anytime. So if you just want to be in for a month, then just cancel it before then. And I, you know, I run the site, so I'm always there. And, and if you think, oh, no, she got me. It went one day over and I didn't want to do the next month. But just write me an email. I go, okay, and I'll cancel it for you, whatever. Right. So, um, I'm here for you. So go to the virtual studio, sign up there, and you can access all of this. Or if you don't want to be in the virtual studio, you know the only thing you want is the ear training, go to the shop, the shop page, and the same part of the menu, top menu, and you'll see all my books. Get the ear training book there. It's cheap. And it's got the the um, audio files and even some discs if you still want to use a CD. So, oh, very cool. And what is your website so people know where to go? It's limitless-guitar.com. Limitless-guitar.com. I love it. I love and, it. And if you can't remember my website, you just type in my name, Charlotte Adams Guitar, Charlotte Adams Limitless. You know, just kind of piece together things but the website is limitless dash guitar that's yeah. awesome i love it i learned a bunch of stuff today too <laughs> i'm glad i was hoping you would i love that because <laughs> <laughs> i know I, you really love music i do i really do you know i struggled a little bit learning music you know but i think you know a lot of the information you you you've given since you've been doing the podcast, you know, actually helped me because I think I was focusing on the wrong things, and that's why I came out. So it was so difficult for me to learn instruments, is because 
I was doing it wrong. I was focusing on the wrong things when I should have been focusing on the other things. And it's focusing on the sound, just like it, you know what, it, when you meditate, you clear your mind. And then just like you really focus on the outside. Well, with music, you kind of clear your mind and you just focus on the sound, you know, of the instrument. And that's what I think, you know, where, when it comes easy is when you start to under, you can connect the sounds and then you can see, you know, where your hands are and you can see like how you're playing or even like you said you don't need the guitar you could actually practice even when you're washing the dishes and you just you kind of learn how to how to scale and, and listen to the notes and either clap your hands or just you know or just listen to is it going high is it going low and then when you get on the guitar you use the same theories and then I think it comes easier for you yeah and your body will follow more easily yeah you know, I picked up on this in our first talk and you you were talking about when you were in um, the piano class piano yes and you you use the word uh, you said I just wasn't coordinated enough mm -hmm. and I went well your coordination no none of us are coordinated enough when we start yeah but that's your body follows your mind right 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 yeah your body needs good direction mm -hmm. and it needs you to trust it right that's so true you're a team you're a yeah. team I like that. It's you know a lot about that from your history with wellness and healing. Yeah. yeah. You're not separate. You're not a mind and a body. You're a mind body that works together. And right. so, you know, when you're punishing your body, like, oh, you just can't do this. You're, you're messing up. Oh, you messed up again. Oh, you played the wrong note, blah, blah, blah. You're on the wrong track. I can tell you. It's not yeah. going to it's not right. going to be fun and and you might learn something but it's not going to go as quickly as you might like right it's going to be as much fun and it should be fun yes joyful yeah you know, 100 even sometimes yeah. you'll get frustrated sometimes it's like any relationship it's you and your guitar yeah you know sometimes you're gonna you're gonna feel frustrated sometimes you're gonna feel elated but when it comes down to it, you're going to feel great. You're going to yeah. love it. You know, you're going to feel this wonderful stuff flowing. Yeah. You're just going to want to hug your guitar, you know. Like, <laughs> I think people have sung about that. You I, know? How yeah. How many people have talked in their, in their music or in their speech? How many famous guitarists that you know just, just like, oh, I love my guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A hundred percent. And even it's funny. And like, sometimes when a song comes out for the first time, when they're singing it, like I'll know the words before they actually say the words. Cause I'm just like, you just like, you go with the flow and it's just, you know, sometimes you just, I guess, get, get immersed with the music. You kind of like, you know, the words would naturally flow into my head real quickly. And then the singer would actually say the same words. And it's like, if I guess, you know, even though I'm not a songwriter, it's like you could actually be a songwriter if you practice because, you know, right away, just listening to the sounds, words just came in my head that I thought would go nicely. And then all of a sudden you hear the musician singing and they're saying the same words, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you just stepped right in that river, didn't you? <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. So oh. tell everybody before we go one more time what your website is so they know. Yes, it's limitless-guitar.com. And I hope to see you there. Everybody yeah. write to me. I love to hear from you. My email address is there, info at limitless-guitar, but you can get it through the site. Yeah, let me know how you're doing and what you need. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. This has been thank awesome, you. Charlotte. I love it. I love it. I love when we spend time together. I do too. So much. I really yeah. do. I, I really do. I love it every time. Yeah, yeah me too. Okay. Well, you have a great day. You too. I'll All see right. you next time. All righty. Bye-bye. Yeah.